shown here is a video of the most athletic species of crocodile today, the Cuban crocodile. Some videos went viral a few years ago and many people were shocked by what they were seeing. To many, not only were they in awe of a mainly aquatic animal moving so fast on land, they thought they were seeing evolution in the making. The truth is, not only is this galloping trait common among crocodiles, having decent terrestrial locomotion has long been part of their lineage. The very first animals in the crocodilian lineage, the crocodilomorphs, were actually small terrestrial predators. Terrestrosuchus is perhaps the best example to point to, as it had long, thinner legs compared to the shorter, stockier legs of today's crocodilians. While crocodilomorphs began to diversify by the Jurassic, with some species beginning to look like today's crocodilians, many still kept the terrestrial body plan. Although the KPG mass extinction event towards the end of the Cretaceous killed off several of the crocodilian and crocodilomorph species, this did not bring about the end of the terrestrial animals. Perhaps the best and most unique example of this is Boverosuchus. Not only was it fully terrestrial, it had hoof-like claws that aided it for hunting on land. The limbs of some crocodilians were actually so well developed that they could have aided them in climbing trees. As cool as these crocodilians were, they all died off and became extinct. What existed before were the last of the true land crocodiles, but today's species still have the ability to move well on land. Crocodilians are known for three different ways to move on land. Belly crawling, high walk, and galloping. Belly crawling, as it sounds like, is when a crocodilian moves with its belly still on the ground. High walking is when a crocodilian lifts itself off the ground with its limbs directly under its body. Galloping is what was seen with this human crocodile, and crocodiles specifically are the ones that can gallop on land. Alligators, caimans, and gharials are not able to gallop. The reason for this is not 100% known, but a possible reason is that crocodiles generally have longer limbs compared to other crocodilians. However, galloping does not necessarily make a crocodilian faster. A study on speeds of running crocodilians found that there was no difference in speeds between galloping and non-galloping animals, so those alligators can still move fast when they want to. Still, it is the galloping crocodiles that have grabbed everyone's attention. Of all the crocodiles that can gallop, the Cuban crocodile is perhaps the best well known for galloping. The species actually has longer limbs compared to other crocodiles, and the reason for this is that Cuban crocodiles thousands of years ago used to hunt a now extinct ground sloth. Therefore, they're actually built for a somewhat terrestrial lifestyle. This makes them one of the few crocs to still somewhat hunt on land. What makes this species more nerve-wracking is that they are one of, if not the most aggressive species of crocodilian. They're known to briefly chase after zookeepers, and there is some evidence for pack hunting behaviors in this species too. While Cuban crocs have gained well-deserved attention, they're not the only somewhat land-based crocs left. Other species that have been known to be somewhat terrestrial are the dwarf crocodile and dwarf caiman species. Both the dwarf crocs and caimans actually forage around in forests at night and aren't too aquatic. The other notable species is the Australian freshwater crocodile, and this species is extremely well known for its galloping. The freshwater crocodile actually has the fastest recorded speed of any crocodilian at just over 10 miles per hour. This also brings me to my next point. They're not as fast as everyone thinks they are. I have seen several claims of them running as fast as 20 to 50 miles per hour and that they can even race with horses in short distances. To debunk this, I'm going to use an analogy a keeper at Gatorland told me several years ago. Look at how long and muscular a horse's legs are. Take a look at how well built these animals are for moving fast on land. Now compare that to the short, stockier legs of crocodilians. The truth is, crocodilians can only run about 5 to 10 miles per hour on land. Don't get me wrong, 10 miles per hour is still a respectable speed. It's just not the legendary status that others have claimed. Truth is, any healthy adult can outrun these guys. Now, to answer the question, how likely is an alligator crocodile going to chase you? Not very. Crocodilians, at the end of the day, are still semi-aquatic ambush predators. They either hunt at the water's edge, in the water, or leap vertically into the air to get prey. They may briefly get out of the water after an initial strike, but this isn't for long periods. Also, most of the time when crocodilians move fast on land, it's to get away from you, not come after you. Galloping in particular is most commonly seen when the animal is trying to escape a threat and get into the water, not to obtain prey. Let's say though that you've encountered a Cuban or a smaller Nile crocodile or even an American alligator that's lost its fear of humans. Just run quickly in a straight line and you'll be good. These guys are not endurance runners and they are not built for long, high speed chases on land. In fact, this can kill them. Crocodilians built up lactic acid very easily and prolonged physical stress can kill these animals. 
it is much more likely for a crocodile to swim after you from afar than for it to run after you. Still, a good rule to follow when you're in an area with crocodilians is to stay at least 15 feet from the water's edge or 15 feet from the animal, and you'll be good. Also, do not zigzag, you will just be wasting your time. While the crocodiles of today are nowhere near the terrestrial lifestyle of their ancestors, we should still be lucky to have these last representatives on this planet. However, this isn't 100% certain to be the case. You see, the Cuban crocodile I brought up is actually a critically endangered species and has been facing many challenges with reduced habitat, poaching, and hybridization with the American crocodile. The dwarf crocodile is also listed as vulnerable, but it doesn't help that the species has continued to be split into several species, which would then lessen those population numbers. Just think that it's possible that the last Boverosuchus or Mycosuchus could go extinct in our lifetime. If you want to prevent this, go to a zoo that has these animals or donate to a group that specializes in the conservation of these species. Let's keep the last land crocodiles alive for generations to come. So many of you know about the current study I am working on about 20 foot plus crocodilians. Heck, the topic is pretty much the main thing I'm known for on here, but I need your help. I am finding some really interesting information pertaining to certain head measurements for at least a saltwater crocodile. However, I am currently working with a small sample size. What I am looking for are detailed measurements from skulls or heads of saltwater crocodiles that came from animals at least 10 feet or 3 meters long. I will have my email and Instagram in the description, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you all for watching. To learn more about the animals you just saw, buy the second edition of What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians. It examines claims of giant crocodiles, World War II massacre, regenerating tails, alligators in the sewers, their record land speeds, and more. The book examines claims many, including experts, get wrong about these animals, and the second edition includes updated information, pictures, and more. Buy What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians, the second edition, in physical or digital formats. Link in bio, comments, or description to buy.